I'm sure you can easily list out all the permutations of the set 1, 2, 3. By itself, this is a little dull. But did you know that we can actually combine them? We can multiply permutations to get another permutation. For example, if I take the permutation 3, 2, 1, I can compose it with the permutation 3, 1, 2 and get another permutation. But how? The key is to think of these as actions. So instead of just thinking of a permutation as some fixed static object, I can think of it as an action of rearrangement. Once I consider them this way, multiplication just becomes simply composing their actions. Now this might seem a little ad hoc. Why would we want to do such a thing? But it turns out that this is a huge area of abstract algebra involving such seemingly disparate areas as combinatorics, representation theory, and even polynomials. So in this video, I want to make clear what this multiplication means and see if we can generalize the permutation structure and talk about it as a group. So let's see how. So let's start by considering the permutation 2, 3, 1. You might imagine that to get this, you can start with the numbers in order, so 1, 2, 3, and then physically rearranging them. So put the 1 in the last slot, put the 2 in the first slot, and put the 3 in the third slot. So in this sense, I could consider the permutation 2, 3, 1 as acting on or rearranging the positions themselves. So in this way, we can actually forget the numbers. So for example, we have our 2, 3, 1 that we just saw above. But if I just erase the numbers, then I'm still left with these arrows and I can consider this action that I have left. The beauty of thinking about them this way is that I can just compose these arrows now and that will tell me how to multiply them. So let's take another permutation, write down its arrows and see if we can multiply these two together. So let's look at 3, 2, 1. This time, 3, 2, 1 basically just swaps the positions of 1 and 3 and we can get rid of the numbers, and we have this arrow diagram. Now, to multiply these permutations, just do one action and then do the other one. So for example, let's say we want to take 3, 2, 1 times 2, 3, 1. So I'm going to do the action 2, 3, 1 first, and then below that, I'm going to write the action of 3, 2, 1. And then we'll write 1, 2, 3 at the top to see how these numbers are being rearranged. And basically, we just follow the arrows. So our first action sends 2 to the first spot, 3 to the second spot, and 1 to the third spot. Following the arrows at the end sends 1 back to the first spot. It sends 2 to the last spot, and then 3 to the middle spot. It keeps 3 fixed. So in particular, we get 3, 2, 1 composed with 2, 3, 1 should be 1, 3, 2 as a permutation. That's kind of neat. I strongly encourage you to try your own permutations and see if you can multiply them out and see if you see any patterns. But for now, this is still a little bit clunky. So I want to take a look at how we can refine our idea of what these permutations are. So notice that if sigma is a permutation like this, so maybe you can associate that with some number permutation, you may have noticed that this looks an awful lot like a function. And what is this function doing? Well, it's sending position 1 to position 2, it's sending position 2 to position 3, and it's sending position 3 to position 1. I can rewrite that as a function. So sigma of p1 is p2, sigma of p2 is p3, and sigma of p3 is p1. Or I can simplify that even further by just saying sigma of 1 is 2, sigma of 2 is 3, and sigma of 3 is 1. Furthermore, these functions are actually invertible, or in other words, we can undo their actions. So just take a, any permutation, for example, our sigma above, and we can undo it by simply reversing the arrows. And maybe you want to reflect it after if you want your arrows to go down, for example, with multiplication. So can you think of what the inverse of sigma is here in terms of numbers? So because we can invert these actions, that means that our functions are actually perfect one-to-one -one correspondences. Or in other words, they're bijective. So the next thing we want to do is wrangle all these together. So let's define a set. Let's fix a natural number n, and we'll define Sn to be the collection of all permutations of 1 to n. In other words, that's the set of all bijections, sigma, that map from the set 1 to n to the set 1 to n. I claim that this collection is closed under our product that we defined above. Closed just means that whenever I take two 
permutations and I take a product of them, the result is also a permutation. And note that this product that we defined above actually corresponds to function composition. So that means, in particular, that the pair Sn with our composition multiplication is a group, and it's called the symmetric group of degree n. So just checking a few details here, notice that multiplication is associative since function composition is. Uh, we saw that inverses exist, and can you guess what the identity permutation is? Furthermore, if n is larger than or equal to 3, then Sn is non-abelian, so it's not a commutative group. And something for you to think about, can you find permutations sigma and pi in S3, where sigma of pi is not the same as pi of sigma? Okay, so why study these? Well, one reason is that it turns out that if G is any finite group, then we can find an embedding G into the symmetric group of degree of the order of G. So in some sense, the SN contain all finite groups. And symmetries naturally have this group structure to them. So somehow these SN contain all finite symmetric groups, which is maybe why they're called the symmetric groups. There's tons of open doors here to explore on your own, but some questions to consider as we wrap up here are how many elements are there in SN? And two, can you come up with a more convenient notation for permutations that help us see how to multiply? And one more thing to think about, can you see any relations between S3 and the group of symmetries of a triangle? If you want to see a relation between some more visual symmetries, take a look at this video that I did where I talk about symmetries of regular n-gons.